What if the whole time you were praying for God to move in your life, he actually was, but you were missing it for one reason or the other? If so, it's okay, I've been there, which is why today we're talking about the top four reasons you may be missing God moving in your life right now. Number one is maybe you're expecting God to do something in the exact same way that he's done it for you in the past. Maybe it looks totally different and that is actually why you're missing it. Maybe you're expecting to see it look like this grand miracle that you've seen before, that you've seen him do before. But what if instead this time it's a still small voice? It's direction, it's guidance, it's wisdom in the way you should go, but that looks very different than what you received before. So I wanna give you a very, very real example of this, okay? I want you to, you're gonna have three seconds to count all of the blue things that are on the screen, okay? That are in this image. Count all the blue things, ready, set, go. Okay, I think I gave you like one extra second. Now I want you to tell me how many yellow things did you see? The answer is probably, I don't know. Why? Because you were focusing on counting the blue things. You missed all the red, yellow, pink, black, other colors that were there because I asked you to specifically tell me how many blue things you saw. So what if that is the same example that is happening right now? What if you're expecting it to look a certain way? You're expecting it to be like very much something. It is very something, it is so much something different. One thing to note is that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but that does not mean that he moves in the exact same ways that he has done it in the past, right? You can, he can literally bless you in so many ways so many different ways you don't even realize it but you're labeling it as adversity you're labeling it as something totally different you're labeling it as um oh that was just a new friend that came back into my life rather than you know god like i've been praying for friends i just didn't know it was gonna look like this right and so anyway what if you're missing it in the way that he is actually presenting it to you just a thought number two is really based in what we all know and have experienced comparison okay whenever i say comparison i'm thinking of what if like we are looking at what if we're looking for god to move in a certain way because of how we saw him move in the person next to us live what if we're looking at someone online some influencer a social media content creator and we're like oh this is how god this is what i like this is what i desire bless me in that way but what if he has a totally different way he wants to bless you right what if he has a totally different way that he's moving right now in your life what if what if the other thing too is what if we're thinking oh god we want this this is my goal this is where i want to be lord this is what i believe you've called me to however you're in a different season so right now it looks like a caterpillar but maybe in three years it's going to turn into a butterfly right what if we're just in a different like season of our actual blessing so don't fall into comparison don't fall into looking what other everybody else has and thinking that's exactly how god is going to show up in our life because if we do that a lot of times we can miss what god is actually doing okay so expect him to bless you in the way that he's going to bless you for you he is good he is perfect he knows what is best for us he has our best interest at heart so i'm at the point in my life where i'm like god do what you do best bro do what you do best because Obviously, I don't know. And honestly, that is the place where I can tell you God has showed up and showed out in my life whenever I have that heart posture is Lord, I give you control. I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. God, I think this is what I want. And if it is, make it apparent for me. Like, <laughs> if it is, make it apparent for me. Give me signs of confirmation. Like, speak it to me, Lord. Confirm it in your word. So anyway, all that to say is God is literally the same yesterday, today, and forever, but how he moves in both your life and the person's next to you life and your, your friend's life and your church family's life may look totally different than how he's gonna move in your life. It could be similar. It could be like the same. It could be very different though. So kind of like how I view this part is like, okay, God, my hands are open. I'm not clinging onto anything. I'm not clinging on a certain way I wanna have it. And this year has honestly humbled me in a way and God has opened my eyes. There are so many ways to do things. You don't have to have it just one way. So kind of open your mind, like imagine all the different ways that God could be blessing you rather than the one way you want him to show up. But number three is what if you're missing God in the small moments, right? So creation in general, what if you walk outside and you just like absorb like what all the God is and is doing and has done in his creation. Like I love being outside, like amongst like 
mountains and trees and water because it really shows God's like creativity, his like, like mightiness, his vastness, like just how amazing and huge our God is. And so what if you're missing in a small moment? Also another thing to think about too is like focus on gratitude. Gratitude will help you not miss the, the small, the, the minute things that we may think of, right? So gratitude as like, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be able to breathe on my own. Thank you for allowing me to have the equipment to put these videos out for you all. Thank you for giving me this laptop, which allows me to edit my videos for like the people you've called me to serve God, like the little, it could be the little things in your mind. Thank you for this apartment, Lord. Thank you that even though I don't have a home studio, thank you that I have a space to film God. Oh, you, you see what I'm saying, you guys? So it's like, it could be little bitty things that you are completely missing because you're only focused on the big, big goal. And because you're not at the big, big goal yet, you're totally missing the little steps that God is taking you on the little notches within the belt that he is moving you up. You are completely missing it. So keep that in mind, you guys, God works in mysterious ways. God works in ginormous ways. He works in small ways and he also has a very still small voice. Okay. Don't throw away the small moments. Okay. Don't throw away the, the, things, the kind of the process to get to where you're trying to go. Okay. There are small moments that could be helping you say, say you've prayed a prayer like, God, I want to reach 10,000 women. Okay. What if to reach that 10,000 women, he had to take you through a season of drought. He had to take you through a season of isolation. He had to take you through a season of like, I got to make sure that your heart is with me because this stage I'm about to put you on is about to be mighty. But in the still small moments here, I need to make sure that you know where to, to call on, you know where to lean on, etc. That was me this past year. And so anyway, those small moments, like it may be hard in the actual moment, but looking back on it, I'm like, no God, this is you. And even, even in those moments, I was like, Laura, this is obviously, this is obviously too much. Cause at this point, it, this must be you. Like if, if we gon' we gon' turn with enemy meant for bad, if it's not you and bring it to good. Okay. And so anyway, <laughs> Like there are several ways God can be moving in your life. Um, we're going to talk about kind of like feeding off of this point in just a second. The next point, which feeds into number two is what if you are mislabeling a certain season, a certain state, a certain moment in your life? What if you are mislabeling something where you think is depression? Okay. You think is anxiousness. And while it could feel like that, and maybe it could even be like that. What if it is both like depression and development? Okay. And I know that's really hard to hear because depression is hard to walk through. And so is isolation. So is anxiousness, all like our anxiety, all of that is very hard to walk through. But what if, what if it could also be development for whatever God is calling you to? What if it could also be development for who God has called you to most importantly, right? So you're praying, God, put me, get me in front of 10,000 people, Lord. Um, I want to be your servant. God, use me. And you pray these big prayers and then you mislabel certain seasons that God is using to get you there. Also, if you are walking through a season of depression, a season of anxiety, a season of just like feeling stuck, alone. You know what I'm trying to say, those feelings. Some of the songs that really helped me whenever I was feeling like that is one, a song called Worthy of Your Song by Maverick City. Um, one of the things that I love to do whenever I am just kind of at rock bottom, I'm just like, <laughs> like, all right, you know, like what the heck else? Um, I love to worship because it puts my mind off of me and my problems and on my creator who I know is far capable of fixing the problem of, um, intervening in the problem of showing me what I need to be learning within the midst of, within the midst of the storm. So anyway, worthy of my song is an amazing song. Like it literally talks about despite what I'm going through, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to praise you. You're worthy of my song, no matter what I go through. And that's by Maverick city music. And I will link that down below in the description box for you. Another song that I love is reason to praise by Naomi rain and Corey Asbury. And I love that song. These two songs are very, very similar in terms of the message of which. So listen to those. Also, I have a whole playlist where I will link down below as well in the description box for you too, of my worship songs, songs that I like to listen to no matter the season, no matter what I'm going through, whether it's high or low or mountain or valley, whatever it may be. Um, I will link that down below for you to check out. But if you're walking through the season that looks like that, if you're in a season where you're like, okay, God, now God, I've been praying for this for a long time 
and Lord, it seems like I'm only making small steps. What if those small steps are God humbling you in that moment to make sure you, your heart is where it needs to be. Maybe it's a heart posture thing. Maybe it is um, a dependence thing. Maybe it is a pride thing. You never know, but God is moving, but we have to just make sure we find them in different ways and not mislabel our certain seasons. Okay. You could really be walking through a season of depression, but how about we also look at that as what if you're also walking through a season of development? That's all I'm saying. So I'm not taking away the fact that you may be walking through depression. Depression is very real. And so is anxiety. And so is all these other issues, but I want you to know that God is bigger and it could be also a season that God is wanting to develop you and show you what depression is really like so that when you get in front of 10,000 people and 1000 of them are struggling with depression, you now know how to address it. You now know how to have empathy about it. And you know, you now know what it's like to walk through it. So you can help them walk through it as you're on the other side. Number six is not walking in obedience to what he has asked you to do. What is the very last thing God has asked you to do and have you done it yet? Okay. We could be missing God. We can be missing God moving in our lives because we're not walking in obedience overall. We're mislabeling it. We are looking at certain seasons as small rather than like an actual process to get to where we're trying to go. But also most importantly is we are not walking in obedience. If God has called us to take care of our bodies in the season and we're not doing that, what if he's needing us to take care of our bodies because our bodies are a vehicle to get to the next step within our purpose. We're going to need the body that we have in order to stand on stages and run around stages and bring people to Christ. You know what I mean? Like what if it's not even, what if it's bigger than that? What if God wants us to be a travel blogger, right? We have to have our health in order to do so. Right. And so what has God called you to do? It doesn't have to be this big whole freaking thing. It can be something so simple, something that we can see is so small and we can bring glory to God within anything outside of sin. We can bring glory to God through anything that we are doing. So what if God has called you to take care of your body? What if God has called you to spend more time with him? What is the last thing God has asked you to do? And I encourage you to do it, to walk in obedience to that, because the goals that we're praying for, the things that we are, are wanting and hoping and putting our faith on, what if it is requiring action? What if it is requiring obedience overall? So those are all the points you guys. Now what I want you to do is I want you to comment below. What are some ways you believe God is moving in your life, but you hadn't realized it until just now? What are small things? What are things you're mislabeling? What are ways that you could be missing God moving in your life? I want you to comment that down below in the comment section. As always, you guys, my name is Andrea. It's been amazing chatting with you and I'm so glad you're here overall. If you guys are new, I have other videos for you. I will put down below in the description box as well as here on the screen in cards for you to check out as well. So I love you to the moon and back. I'm always rooting for you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.